And good morning. Um, welcome to Let's Talk About Personal Safety. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Meg, and I am continuing to be the acting outreach coordinator until Mary gets back. Um, our uh, weekly Let's Talk and Just Ask sessions. Oh, yeah, hang on. Got it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, our weekly sessions, either the Let's Talk About or Just Ask Us, um, are supported by the United Way, and we're very, very grateful for that. It's our opportunity to share with you in this manner, and, um, and we thank them very much for making that possible. Now, before I introduce today's presenter, I'm going to cover off a couple of housekeeping items. So if everybody would mind um, muting their mics to block outside noise as well, um, sometimes we get some echo going if people have theirs open. At the bottom, we have enabled captioning um, for your screen. So feel free to, uh, it should be happening for you now. And I think you can also stop that if you don't like it for everyone but me. Um, so what we'll do is um, ask you if you have any questions or thoughts that uh, come about when our presenter is talking um, and you have any comments, throw them in the chat. Uh, and at the end of the presentation, we'll get to the questions. And hopefully if, uh, if it works for us, we'll open up the mics as well. Um, this session, as you know, is uh, being recorded. That will be uploaded. And by tomorrow, we should be able to share this with you um from the youtube channel and uh if you have any presentation suggestions and we would very much appreciate it if you do send us an email to mary e at seniorsnl.ca um, or you can call us at 737-2333 and a toll-free 800-563-5599 um, and now I'd like to ask Barb to take a moment and allow us to acknowledge the land that we live on. Good morning. We yeah, here I go, starting off. <laughs> we respectfully acknowledge the land on which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beatic, whose culture has now been erased forever. We also acknowledge the island of Ukta Humguk, erased forever. We also, oh wait, I'm sorry, I repeated myself. We also acknowledge the island of Ukta Humguk as the unceded traditional territory of the Biafic and the Mi'kmaq. And we acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Innu of Nita Sinin, the Inuit of Nuna Si Abut, and the Inuit of Nuna Tilbut. We recognize all First Peoples who were here before us, those who live with us now, and the seven generations to come. As First Peoples have done since time immemorial, we strive to be responsible stewards of the land and to respect the cultures, ceremonies, and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. You're mute. Okay. Um, thanks, Barb. You so before I introduce uh, our speaker, um, I don't know about you, but when I think about personal safety, my mind jumps to things that might be something that could harm me or feel unsafe and so feeling like some danger might be near, or maybe I've done something inadvertently to put myself at risk. I also know that I'm not someone who's very good at being aware of my surroundings. Um, and what's happening maybe in my personal space. And uh, I'm a truster. So my first instinct is to trust whatever is you are going to do or say and believe that uh, you will do no harm. So for my own personal safety and the safety of everyone in our circles and our communities, I'm very happy to present Constable Tanya Swartz. 
Um, Constable Schwartz is, has been with the RNC for 14 years. She is currently and has been in the role of community services for the past seven years and has also spent seven years on patrol. And so now I'm gonna pass over to Constable Schwartz and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that she may. Okay, good morning, everybody. Just give me a second now to get my screen up right now. There we go. There we go. You guys see that? Yeah. Awesome. So uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's beautiful out today. The sun's shining. It's cold, but at least the sun is shining. I feel that gives us a little bit of spirit and, um, and hope for a spring to come and new things, hopefully. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit um, with you guys about some personal safety tips. Very general stuff, um, but it's stuff that we kind of forget a lot of times. Um, we get complacent in our lives um, and we start to forget these little basic things. And I'm just as guilty for it um, as anybody else. So hopefully I'll be able to share some stories with you guys also. And um, please put any questions in and hopefully, you know, it's not too long of a presentation. I find that um, discussion is a lot of times a lot better to share and learn from each other. Sometimes we learn from each other's mistakes. Um, and, and sometimes we learn like tips to stay safety, stay, stay safe in our communities. So I'll get started and then I'll take some time then maybe, you know, halfway before I start a new section to see if there's any comments or anything like that. All right. Now, if I get this to work, it'd be great, guys. Hang on a second. I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec because something came up. There we go. That's better. Okay. There we go. My computer is very slow. There we go. Okay, there we go, it's working. All right, so first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about, and I just kinda of use um, my slides as like some background stuff just to keep me on track a little bit, um, is talking about your own personal safety in your homes, all right? Some people live in apartment buildings, some people are still in their own homes, as some people might be living um, in, you know, some care facilities. Um, we all have different places where we live to. And because of that, um, security and that sense of security sometimes uh, can be different. I find that people who live in apartment buildings sometimes may have um, a sense that, you know, they're very secure, that nobody's going to get into the building. Okay. Um, and oh. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. But some of the things that um, we do see a lot of times are people letting others into the buildings and stuff that they live in that, you know, maybe they shouldn't be um, buzzing in, buzzing in let, holding the door for opening, okay? So it says, never let people you do not know inside, um, regardless of their like, you know, you know, I'm Johnny's, um, you know, grandson, he lives in this apartment. Well, you don't really know Johnny right? Um, and then letting him into the building, you're opening up everybody else, not only you, um, into a situation where you can become a victim of a crime. Um, so we see people like entering into buildings, checking doors, things like that. Um, one of the biggest things that, you know, I've heard of over the years um, is, you know, in your apartment buildings or where you're living, um, not locking your own personal room doors. Right. So like you're running downstairs to get, you know, lunch or dinner with somebody or you're running to the, like, you know, do some laundry or you're just going next door to your friend's house. 
and you're not locking your apartment door because you're in the building and you feel like you're secure. It is really important that we continue to lock your doors, um, have like, I always say those lanterns with the keys on it attached to your neck, you lock your door. I'm gonna say, because you don't know who's getting into the building and they can just go around and check the doors. So little, little things that we kind of get complacent on um, is really important. Um, not only that, um, making sure that whatever, wherever you're living, you don't have your actual name on it. Like I'll drive around and even on people's houses, like they'll, maybe my house, they'll have Swartz, the Swartz's residence or on a rock or something. You don't want people knowing actually who your name, what your name is. And especially uh, in buildings or anything, apartment buildings that you might be living in, saying, you know, you know, Joan Smith lives here on number 202. Well, it's just really easy to buzz in. Someone's like, oh, hey, Joan, how you doing? Can you let me in? And you just assume it's somebody that you, you know. Um, other things, contractors make like, you know, if there's being work done on your home or work done in your building, um, let's start with the building. You know, the person who's the superintendent of that building or the manager of the facility that you live in, they need to be responsible for who's coming in and out. Um, if someone's there, oh, we're here to fix, you know, um, we're doing some work on the building. Well, don't you let them in. Get a superintendent or the manager, whoever, to let them in. When it comes to your own home and maintenance, um, make sure that, you know, I'm the same lady, like my husband, God bless his heart, is a lovely man, but he can't even hang a picture, right? So I have to reach out to people to help me all the time to do stuff. Um, it's like little maintenance things. Um, the same as everybody else. If you're getting someone to come into your house to do maintenance, to do something, make sure they're, um, you know, reputable like you know you're getting them from maybe a business you have references for that person over the years i don't know if you guys noticed uh, this week there was a man on the news going to court i think he had over a hundred different charges or more over numerous years um and it was all kind of like property maintenance kind of scans and when i first started policing that was 14 years ago I actually dealt with him that long ago and what he was doing and he was offering like services, carpentry work and all that kind of stuff, mostly seniors he would hit. So if you, if you looked at his files, he was targeting seniors um, to go in and, and, you know, fix up his house. And I went to a home, um, this, this elderly man, super sweet. He had hired him to come in and do some work on his cupboards. So the work on his cupboards, you know, became a lot bigger, like, oh, you need this done and this done, and I need money up front. And he gave him some money to start, and he did a bit of work, and then he needed more money. And then he never, ever came back, right? Never, ever finished the job. This was his MO. This is the kind of things that he would do. Um, and uh, the poor man had paid him all this money. Uh, he used aliases a lot of times for his names. Um, and these are the things you have to be really, really careful about. We all can be a victim of that, no matter who we are, because we're looking for a good deal. We're looking for someone to come in. If someone's looking for money up front, um, you know, I can understand that when it comes to, you know, home maintenance and stuff like that. But you make sure that you just give a little bit at a time, right? If you have to do that. Most rebel businesses will, will charge you at the end. Like I got my basement finished and the guy didn't ask me for money and I didn't give him money until half the work was pretty much done. And I only gave him half the money and I didn't give him his final money until everything was completed, even the little things, cause they're not gonna come back, all right? So make sure that you're being very careful with contractors and people who are coming into your building. I just, uh, I'll tell you this story after I just read the email and I was just thinking, oh my goodness, what's the world coming to? One of the other things is preventing, this is burglary, but like break and enters into your homes or stuff like that. And break and enters not only into a private home, but into um, complexes and buildings that you were living in. Um, and this has, you know, this is, has all these different kinds of things that you might not have control about, like your entry doors and stuff like that. 
But what you do have control of is making sure your doors are locked even when you're at home. Like my house is like Fort Knox. Like I walk in my house and I close the door and I lock the door, all right? We got to get away from living in the world that we used to when I was probably growing up and you were growing up that our doors were left open. We knew all our neighbors in our neighborhood. It was a very community, right? You knew who the person was that you couldn't trust, but uh, majority of the people in your community you knew, right? Um, we don't even know sometimes who our neighbors are nowadays, hey? We've kind of gotten away from, and especially with COVID. I mean, we've all been kind of isolated. So it's really important that we lock our doors day, night, when we're in there. I have a, a routine that I do every single night before I go to bed. And if I don't do it, I, I have to get up or I won't sleep. I go to my front door. I check the doors to make sure they're locked, that I didn't forget. I lock my car doors, beep, beep, with my alarm. And I make sure the outside lights are on. Now, I know things have gotten expensive over the years, especially electricity and all that kind of stuff. But really, um, having your lights on outside your house, front and back, is a huge deterrent for crime. Okay? So the people who are breaking into homes and things like that or their shed, they don't like the light, right? They like the darkness. So if you're creating an environment where your house is dark, your backyard is dark, your neighbor's house is dark, the other neighbor's dark, well, that's, you know, there's a good spot for me to go to. If we're all lit up, well, I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's deterring it from happening. So making sure that, you know, things are light up. If you live in apartment buildings or anything like that, and you notice that, you know, there's a part of the parking lot where you go up to your car to go out and, and the light is gone, right? Let the, you know, superintendent, let the maintenance people know this, the management, you pay a lot of money to live in buildings and, and uh, you know, apartment buildings and stuff like that. Make sure that the lights have been fixed and changed, that it's a well lit area. And if you notice that, you know, there's parts of, you know, the parking lot or the building that's not well lit or not safe, bring it to somebody's attention to make sure that this is, you have to advocate a lot of times for yourself. Um, and not to leave um, that stuff alone because it is your safety. Um, when we're living in our own homes or even out in uh, apartment buildings and we're doing um, work outside, um, spring is starting to come, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, people are gonna get out into their gardens and stuff again. We're gonna have our ladders out, our tools. It is really important that when you're finished with those tools for the day that you actually put them away, right? Because I remember coming home one day and I went out into the backyard and my husband was out doing something. He was trying at least, right? And he had left some screwdrivers and stuff like that out on the back patio. And I looked at him and I said, you know, John, like you have to bring these stuff in and put them away. And he's like, well, I should, that's not hurt. I'm going to use them again tomorrow. And I said, yeah, but now you've left out a great break and enter tool on the back patio for someone to get into the house. Right? Um, years ago, there was this guy, we called him the shovel bandit. So your shovels, think about that, bringing them inside. He was a shovel bandit and he was hitting Southlands like crazy. Um, and what he would do, he would use people's own shovels that they had left out, jump up on the second floor of the rooms of the houses and wedge the windows and stuff open. So we called him the shovel bandit, right? A lot of people didn't have home security systems in the upstairs of their homes. We usually just have them in the, the lower levels. So just making sure we put things away. Also, when the spring comes, you know, if you're living in your own homes, your garages are open, you might be in the back working on something, your front of your house is completely open for anybody, right, to enter. So if you're not there in front of the house, you make sure your garages are closed and your doors are locked while you're not there. Um, really important kinds of things. Other things that, you know, you want to think about, especially if you're moving residents. So if you're moving into a new apartment, ask if you can have the, a new lock put on, right? And a lot of people don't think about that. And they just, they're handed over the keys and you're like, great. But somebody lived there before you 
and you don't know how many keys are actually out there, right? Um, like the resident, the person that lived there before, they may have gave some to their, you know, their grandchildren, their, you know, their children themselves. Anyone could have a key. So ask to have um, a lock changed that you have your own brand new lock. And I don't think that's much to ask, to be honest, for your own personal safety when it comes to that. Don't hide keys outside the house. Oh my goodness, right? That's, people are gonna look. And unfortunately, people are watching, right? They're usually in neighborhoods sometimes and we call it casing, right? They're kind of looking around. They know the habits of people and what's going on. Don't hide anything like your key under the flower pot, like behind the bush and nothing like that. Um, if you need to have an extra key, don't leave it in your car either. If you have a neighbor that you trust, now this is, you know, you have to really trust this person um, or a family member that lives close by, give them a key, all right? Um, and don't hide it outside. Now, if you give your neighbor a key, but you've noticed lately that they've been telling you they've been having some hard times with like their grandson. Their grandson's going through a hard time. Maybe he's involved in some drugs. Maybe there's things going on in his life. And that happens to everybody. Good people too, right? Um, you might have to think and reevaluate. Mm, maybe I should get that key back right um and you can do that in a really nice kind way and just say oh my god i locked my key in the house can i get that key back <laughs> and then never give it back right there's always ways of doing stuff right oh you know what you never ever gave the key back um because situations are happening in people's homes and lives that you might be aware of all right um yeah also one of the big things are if you come home one day and you feel like something's not right and you think that someone has been in your home make sure that you don't go in and you can call the police right away now everybody has this thing about calling the police you don't want to bother us because we're too busy right because we're having tim hortons and we're having our coffee and our donuts and don't bother the police well we want to be bothered that is our job we get paid really good money to be bothered Okay, so if you feel uncomfortable, you know, you get this, I call it the spidey sense, right? You get that weird feeling in your stomach when you go in your house, something's not right. Well, you call us, we rather have a false alarm than something happen to you. All right, so don't be afraid to call us at all. When you call the police, there's a couple of ways that you call. Um, in a situation where you feel fear, you feel afraid, you feel like somebody's been in your house in an emergency. 911. Okay. Call the call takers will say, you know, 911 emergency. Do you want police, ambulance, or whatever you say, police? It doesn't matter. They'll they'll know who to send it to. And if you say, I think there's somebody in my house. I came home, things are kind of out of place. I left the door unlocked and I feel someone's there. And so you send police right away. That's an urgency, isn't it? You can hear the urgency in my voice. If you call, because I've been in the communication center, so I know. If you call and say, well, you know, I kind of went out for an hour or so, and I came home and I just don't feel, I feel like, you know, someone may have been here. Is that an urgency then? The urgency in my voice has changed. Now, all of a sudden, you know, your priority three on our list to respond instead of a priority one, okay? So the way you articulate stuff, it's really important because you have to think when you call the police, and I think this is important to know, when you call the police, a call taker takes your information. So she's taking that information and trying to put it into a little block as she types. And then she's sending it, or he is sending it into the dispatcher, the police officer to dispatch it out. So information gets lost and the urgency gets lost sometimes. So it's really important that if you are nervous, if you're scared that you articulate that because that's an important thing. A lot of times calls that, and then we'll get a call back and say, the police aren't, nobody came and this is what's happened and something more worse has happened just because of the way it was um, told to the police. It gets lost, right? Communication gets lost in all these steps. 
Um, so yeah, call the police right away. Don't go in, wait outside, go to a neighbor that you trust until a police officer can come, all right? Um, same thing with your windows, uh, big time now. The summer is starting to come. We love to open up the windows, let the air blow through, get that stink of house out of there from the winter. Um, great to do that, but make sure that you're not going far from those windows and you don't leave them opened um, when you're not home. Okay. Um, I noticed one day I was driving down the street and my neighbor had her windows all open and I knew she wasn't home. And I just shook my head because I was like, oh, now you're just opening yourself up to be a victim, right? So I texted her and said, hey, don't mean to be nosy neighbor, but your windows are all open and I know you're not home. The nosy neighbor is a great neighbor to have, just to let you know, right? Nosy neighbors are awesome because they know everybody who's coming in the neighborhood. They know people who are leaving. They know that strange person that was walking down the road. Um, so um, enjoy that nosy neighbor. As long as they're not getting too much into your business, it's nice to have that nosy, nosy neighbor. Um, also making sure your patio doors are secured and we're not leaving them. They're really easy to leave open. Um, when you close your windows, I'm guilty of this and I have to admit, um, sometimes I like to open the window in the kitchen, get the smell of food out and stuff, even in the winter. Um, I don't lock them sometimes. I forget to lock them. So when you pull them down or you want, make sure you lock them. And I've gone back a few days later and went to put the window up again and realized I hadn't locked it. And I was very lucky nothing happened. Um, but make sure when we're closing, we're locking those kinds of things. Okay. Now, does anybody have any questions or comments before I move on to the next kind of topic? I don't, and I can't see the question screen. I don't know how I get that up. Let me see. So uh, that's in the chat, but there's nothing in the chat right now. Okay. And the other thing about coming home to your home is something that like we really all get complacent about. So you're coming into your door and you might have some bags with your groceries or some things. You're out shopping. You got a few things with you. You got your keys in your hand. We drop it all in the front porch a lot of times or in front of the door. And we leave our keys by the door too. Um, really important that we don't leave our keys close to the front door where people can just open up the door, reach in and take our purses, our wallets. Um, I remember this. I always have these stories. This is what reminds me of things. Uh, this man, um, he it was summertime and he had his wallet on the counter in his kitchen in plain view, right? So you can see it from windows. This is the biggest thing. And his window was open and the person never even entered his home. He reached in through the window and took his wallet, right? So like really bold, opening up doors and grabbing people's purses. So making sure that when we come home, that like we put that stuff out of sight and out of um, just making sure that, you know, we're doing everything we can to be like a victim, not a victim. And when I'm talking about this stuff, I don't want anyone to feel nervous or scared or like feeling like crime is crazy. And, you know, it's just the little things we can do to protect ourselves, really, right? Little things. So I don't want anyone feeling kind of scared about any of this stuff. Because it sounds like a lot when it's all coming out. Like I'm even listening to myself now and I'm like, well, that's a lot to be throwing at people. But really, um, it's just, it's really basic things that if we all do, it was gonna, it's gonna help us to not end up being a victim of crime in some way, right? Um, and, you know, we do, let's be honest, we still really do live in a beautiful place and a safe place. There is crime, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, and the more we can do to protect ourselves and not be a victim, then the, that's better for us, right? Um, so these little tiny things, little things that we can do is really important, okay? So answering the door and phone, and this kind of is gonna go in a little bit about a couple of like scams and stuff also. Um, so when we're opening, you know, the, you know, someone's knocking on the door, um, I can't stand the people that come to the door. I don't know about you guys, but they're like trying to sell stuff from that. And you don't know nowadays if it's real or not. Does anyone ever feel like that? Like, I have no idea. 
So like you'll have the Bell guys come, Bell Alliance or Rogers. And then I have this other one is like save the children or whatever come to the door. Or I'll have, um, um, what's the other um, security company? I can't remember what it's called, but there's another one that comes to the door selling security and things like that. And I'm really don't trust a lot of people and I said like Meg said like she's very trusting well in naturally we're all trusting people we're human beings right and we trust and care about others that's that's why we live in such a beautiful place um and humanity that's what we're about um but in my job I have become non-trusting right uh, and my husband's always like you're crazy right? <laughs> and I'm like yeah I'm a little crazy but uh it's just the nature of what I've seen but people come to my door and they're asking for donations like I always have this one man down the street who I know is a neighbor who collects for the heart and stroke foundation so I know him I trust him I'll give him a couple of dollars a man coming with the thing on, collecting for Save the Children, I'm like a little weary about because I really don't know the organization. I don't know that person. It's not little Johnny collecting for the school, trying to do a fundraiser. So I'm a bit weary. So I always, and this is my rule of thumb, and it's something that, you know, all of you can follow. I always say, give me your information. I will review it. And if I would like to donate, I will contact any phone numbers there and contact them myself. Now, also be very careful of the information given because nowadays people can make brochures and pamphlets up very, very easily. I would then take that information, maybe go online and look up, talk to my friends. Have you ever heard of this organization? You can even call the RNC to find out if this is um, a legitimate um, a lot of times groups will call us if they're working in an area, they'll call us and say, hey, we're working in this area if you get any calls. So we'll know if it's legitimate, okay? Um, the other thing which I find, um, you know, delivery persons arriving, um, you know, making sure if you're living in buildings that you're not the one letting them in, you get, you know, whoever's supposed to um, at the buildings to escort people and make sure that person stays with them, right? Um, never give information to um, anybody that you don't know. Don't give your credit card out to someone in the front door. Don't give them any of your personal information. Also, a really good tip I find is if someone's collecting, and if you have, you know, you can always say, listen, you know what? I appreciate what you're doing, but I have a couple of charities that I donate on a regular basis, and that's my charities, but thank you, right? That's all you have to say. Right. You have and some people might have certain ones that they already donate. You don't have to give money to every single person that comes to the door. OK, um, phone calls and stuff like that. Someone trying to bring in again, make sure never let a stranger in to a building. If someone calls you um, and, you know, we have a lot of those scams and stuff. And I'll get into those in a second. If it's too good to be true, it usually is. That's the rule of thumb. The police are not coming to arrest anybody if you have unpaid bills or anything like that. That is not what our mandate would be. Um, and I always say, I came home one day and my I could hear my husband on the phone. And I was like, he needs a lot of help, as you can tell. Right? <laughs> so I, he, caught, he was on the phone with um, Revenue Canada. They had called. And you guys all know. We, how many times do we broadcast Revenue Canada scams, right? They're so often, they're really believable. Like you're on the phone and they're telling you you owe money um, and that, you know, you're going to be arrested if you don't pay your funds. Like they make you feel believable. So I came home from, I was working and I heard my husband on the phone and I could see him saying, well, I don't like, you know, I, I put my taxes in last year and I was like, I went right to his office and I said, who are you talking to? He said, Revenue Canada. I said, hang up the phone and tell them that you will call yourself. And he got off and he was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, you're being scammed, <laughs> right? And he's like, and like, you know, he's 40, 40, what, 46 years old. And I'm like, you're being scammed. He's like, well, no, like it sounded, I said, no. Whenever they call, you say, you know what? I am going to hang up Thank you for letting me know. 
and I will call myself. And don't call the number that they have on your phone that they called from. Call, look up the phone number in the phone book or wherever and get the actual number and call and they will really quickly tell you, oh, that's a scan, right? Or they'll look up your file, right? No one should know your social insurance number. Revenue Canada already got your social insurance number. You don't have to give it out to anybody, right? So we and the police are not coming arresting anybody. We got that's not part of what the police will do. Okay. And we'll talk more about scams in a second. So let's be safe in our community now. The weather's getting better. We're trying to hopefully get out. Maybe life will get back to normal a little bit. Um, staying safe. Um, always be aware of your surroundings. Okay. So this is something that Meg said, sometimes we're not aware of what's going on around us. We're, we're so busy. We're in our own world. We have things on our mind. I mean, there's some days I show up to work in CBS and I don't even know how I got here, right? Because my mind is on something else. We're very like pulled in many directions in our lives, right? You got to get to the doctor. You got to get to the grocery store. You got to pay your bills. You know, you're having a disagreement with your family. So there's so much on our mind. So we get distracted. And distract it means we're not aware of what's going on around us, right? So when we're coming to and from our homes, in our cars, it's very important that we're alert on where we're going to, okay? Um, going to the bank machine or the bank. Really important that when we're doing that stuff, um, like the ATMs and stuff, we're doing it in daylight hours. And I'm gonna tell you that because I know it gets dark really early, um, it is important that that's a safety thing. I mean, we've had incidents where people have been robbed at the ATNs, um, and it is important that you're aware of your surrounding. So if you have to go to an ATM day or night, make sure it's one that there's lots of people around. It's a busy area because people who are going to do this stuff don't like busy areas. Too many witnesses, too many eyes. All right. You're going to try to go to the bank in the daylight hours. Very important. Um, and if you have to go at a time when it's maybe not daylight, choose a spot where it's a busy spot, like there's lots of people going around, all right? Um, you know, when we're driving our cars and we're parking them, park them under lights and well-lit areas. Don't park them in the darkest area, the very end of the parking lot, because you don't want your car to get hit by another car, or get a dent. You want to make sure that you're safe. Your safety is more important than a dent in your car, really. Um, walk confidently at a steady pace. And now I tell the grade six kids, I do a lot of stuff at school. And that's one of the things I talk to the kids about. When you're saying no, or you're talking to somebody and you're feeling intimidated, you stand tall, you have a clear voice and you walk like you know what you're doing, all right? We're not kind of scrambling around and disheveled and kind of holding ourselves and looking nervous. We're, even though we might be nervous about a situation, we're standing tall and clear. If you have your hands, when you're going to your car or going to your apartment building, make sure you have your key ready to go, all right? You're not at your car scrambling in your big purse with everything in it looking for your keys. Be ready, be prepared, have your keys so that you can get into your car quickly, lock your doors and you're in safely. Same as going into your buildings and stuff like that, making sure that you're prepared and you're ready. Okay, so when we're scrambling and looking, we're not, um, we're distracted. We're not aware of our surroundings. Our heads are down and we're not looking around to where we are, okay? Um, and if you feel trouble or feel like you're in danger, attract help, all right? Um, and I told you to have your key ready. And I always say, don't tell the chief this, but I know it's been recorded. But if you got your keys in your hand like that, and you're holding on to them, and someone comes up to you, and maybe grabs your, what, what can you use your key for? Good weapon, right? Give them a dart, right? Do what you gotta do for your own safety. Um, and on a lot of the keys have your car alarms, right? So you can draw attention by hitting that alarm and making that car make noise. And yell and scream if somebody's upset, making noise is really important, all right? Attract attention. We don't wanna be invisible. We wanna be very visible when we're out and about. Okay. I used to remember, like, I used to, when I was younger, I'd walk in a trail and I always I had a rock in my hand. 
I don't know what I would do with the rock, right? I was only young, but I thought that that rock was my like safety thing, right? Having those handheld alarms is really good or like um, your car alarm is really good to have. Putting the car alarm even in your room next to your bed. So if something happens, even if you fall and hurt yourself or, or you're scared and you're in your room, Hitting, keep hitting that alarm, you're going to attract the neighbors, right? To find out like what's kind of going on there. Why is that? They're going to come over and check on you and knock on your door, right? So those are really great little uh, things that you can have. All right. And lock your car and take the keys. Really important. Um, when you're in your car, make sure that you lock your doors. I always lock your doors. Um, we've had incidents before, not in a long time though. Um, that people are stopped at lights and somebody tried to, to get into their car. Now, a lot, I don't know about you guys, but I know a lot of people feel really uncomfortable with the panhandlers downtown a lot of times. Um, they make you feel uncomfortable. I can, majority of the panhandlers are very, very good people. They're just in a bad situation, right? Um, and they're not allowed actually by law to come off. They're not supposed to actually enter into traffic. Now you'll see them going over and getting some money from somebody, but they're not supposed to be actually entering into traffic. There's no law against panhandling, but I always see cars and people like they get the window up and they're like this and they're very, very nervous about it. Um, there's not, there, you know, we've had a couple of calls of a couple of aggressive panhandlers, but not very often, right? And a lot of times, you know, when I'm driving in my personal car and I look like a normal person, I got my windows up, my door is locked. And if they come by, I'll just go, no thanks, right? Sorry, or whatever. Um, or you might be a person who gives them a loony or, or whatever. And that's fine too. If that's a personal choice that you want to make. Um, but if there's anyone who approaches your car and they're being aggressive or anything like that, certainly call the police and let us know so that we can go in and make sure, see what's going on there because you're not the only one a lot of times, right? Now, protecting our valuables. How many of you, I always ask this question when I, when I talk to a group, how many of you guys now, and I can't see everybody, but I just want you to kind of think, carry your social insurance number with you in your wallet. Anybody do that still? Because when I was growing up, I got my social insurance number because I was getting ready to get a job and I was 16 and I was like so happy. And I got my social insurance number for my job. And my mom said, you put that in, you got to keep that safe now, put that in your wallet, right? Now, if you're, nowadays, if you lose your wallet and your social insurance number is in it and your driver's license, and maybe your birth certificate, because that was another thing I had in my wallet, my birth certificate. Well, I don't know why I have my birth certificate with me. Um, that's a lot of information for somebody to have, right? And we have something we call identity theft nowadays. And I think I might have a slide on that one. No, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, identity theft is when somebody basically steals your information and is able to take that information like your social insurance number, driver's license, addresses, all that kind of stuff and open accounts in your name, right? They could, they could get a visa, they could open an account at Rogers or Bell or whatever. So that information is really important to protect more so than ever before. So you're, it's really, you know, it's, I don't know about you, but I lose my wallet every day or my, like, I can't find what I did with something. Like, where's my wallet? Where's my purse? And I'm running around the house looking for it. The likelihood of losing your wallet is probably pretty high, right? So make sure that we take out our birth certificates, our um, SIN numbers, or, you know, social insurance cards. Put them somewhere safe, right? Like, and I got a little safe here. Put them in a, de a safety deposit box. Maybe you have one of those boxes, like a safe at home. You put it in. Put it in a secure space, all right? You might have a little drawer or something that you put all that stuff in. Um, because if you lose your wallet, that's going to be a lot of real pain. If you do lose your wallet, please report it to the police. Um, and you can do that online now. Um, just report, let them know what was taken. Because down the road, if you do become a victim of identity theft, you are not going to know until probably years that you've been a victim. 
what happens is somebody has opened an account, they're buying stuff, they have visas, they're not being paid. Then, you know, you start getting calls from companies saying, you know, you owe this and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I had this gentleman, um, this was years ago too. He did lose his wallet and he started getting phone calls from like the creditors, right? Trying to get money he owed. And he apparently owed a whole whack of money to Rogers in Alberta. And he's like, I've never been to Alberta in my whole life, right? But what had happened when we started talking was that he had lost his wallet at some point and his identity had gotten stolen. And it was a lot of work for him to um, get this straightened out. And sometimes it can affect travel, um, your credit, all of those kinds of things. So protecting your information is really important nowadays. All right. Um, keep photos and descriptions of value of property. This is a because you know when you have when you're a victim of a crime such as a break and enter, it's very emotional um, because those things um, you might have um, a ring that was your mom's ring, a family heirloom, something that was very important to you. You might have a whole bunch of stuff. I know I have things from my mom that I have that mean nothing to anybody else but me, right? It's important, write those things down exactly what they are. Or nowadays with like, you know, digital photography and stuff, take pictures of important things um, so that, you know, if you are a victim of break and enter, then you can say, these are the things that have been stolen. Really good for police because a lot of times they're being sold online. Um, when you're emotional, you might forget what was there. Take a picture of your jewelry box, right? Take a picture of like serial numbers and things like that. I remember my mom used to, my mom used to put stuff in a baggie and put it in the freezer or the fridge. Like things like ID, like, like numbers, serial numbers, pictures and things. She's a pretty safe woman, but that's what she used to do, put it in the fridge, all right? Um, really awesome. Um, and this is just about, I'm gonna go through this part a little, little quickly. Uh, but this one is just about like direct deposit for any checks you receive in the mail. So like changing over to direct deposit is a real safe thing. I know like my dad, um, he was forever still getting his old age pension like a check in the mail. Um, and he had the mailboxes out of the house, right? So it was now everything has kind of changed to the community mailboxes. But still, he had so much problems because the mail carrier would put his check in someone else's mail slot by accident. Not mean, like there was no ill intent, but that human error, right? Start changing over the direct deposit because it goes right into your account and you don't have to worry about checks or someone stealing it or anything like that. Um, now that can be a pain too, <laughs> trying to get a hold of someone, get it switched over. It might take a few months or so um, to do that. Um, never send cash to the mail. My dad does this too. He sends $50 to my brother in Arizona for his birthday every year. And I'm like, dad, he doesn't need your money for one thing, right? A card is nice. I said, and don't go send him cash. He might not get it. So then I'm responsible to find out if he got it or not every year, right? So don't send cash. <laughs> and you can, you can like, you know, uh, family members just look at cards most times just to know you're thinking of them. Um, and, um, again, like secure mailboxes, any credit applications you receive. So I, honest to God, I could have a thousand credit cards. I know like I get so much mail about you've been pre-approved for this credit card. And on email, I get a ton of those too. I just delete it. Or if I get it in the mail, rip it up and shred it. Okay, because you don't want anyone else applying for a credit card on your hat. So rip that stuff up and throw it in the garbage. If you get an email, you don't, if you want a credit card, you're going to go look for it, right? That could be a scam also. So delete it. Um, you can always call your own bank and say, hey, listen, I've got an email about this credit card. I'm interested. Can I talk to somebody about it? All right. Don't just click on a link that sends you to a credit card because they're going to ask you for a whole bunch of information you know what you want to apply for. Um, and that's another thing with your credit cards. If you use credit cards on a regular basis, just have that one credit card in your wallet that you use. If you have multiple credit cards, put those away, right? They might be like 
your safety ones or extra ones that you have. Um, only carry the credit cards that you actually need. And this sounds very basic, but like we all do this stuff. Like I'm, I'm guilty too, right? Like I'm totally guilty for all this. So this is what I was talking about when it comes to identity theft. I'm not going to go into this too much. Um, it says it accounts for 25% of all credit card fraud. I, I can, I'd say this is probably off since this presentation has been done, right? Um, the officers here at the police station, like they're always doing up warrants data. It's called data warrants to get information from banks and stuff and other people's fraud information. This consumes the officers. It's such, and it's very hard. Um, it's a very hard thing to help to solve and to help people with. If you feel like you are a victim of identity theft, please call the police. They will give you information and steps to follow okay so it might be um contacting you know equifax or these are these agencies that would red flag your name um so that somebody who's trying to open a credit card in your name will be very very difficult for them to do that right so they they would definitely um, give you the steps so if you feel like you've been a victim of this um, don't be afraid. Please call us and let us help you go through the steps that you need to. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I was on the phone with my nephew in Ontario and uh, he was helping his mom, my sister, with all of her um, IDs, her uh, computer IDs. Mm. And, and he was very serious. He's, you know, late 20s. And he said, Meg, you do know that your ident your digital identity is more important than your actual person, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, Michael, never, but I yeah. get your point. So true, digital, though. yeah. Yeah, like that generation, digital identity is everything and they protect it in so many different ways. Yeah. And and for like even me, um, I'm still like a lot of times behind the times when it comes to that stuff, right? And like, I'm 47 and like, like you said, like all of this stuff has kind of just exploded the past 10 to 15 years, right? Really. And to keep up with it and to catch up with this, sometimes it can be so confusing. Um, and even for myself, who I feel like I'm pretty, you know, no digital savvy, you know, you know, I'm not awesome, but I can manage. Um, for some other people, a lot of our seniors, it can be really like confusing, right? Um, and I know a lot of seniors use technology nowadays. Um, if you don't understand something, reach out. And I know seniors I know are awesome for doing stuff like that. Um, and if they don't know the information, they'll find out the information for you. And, and that's a wonderful thing. Reach out to the police, um, community service officer like myself, like we're always available to, if, you're, if you really are, don't know what's going on, um, you're confused about something, you see something not right with your credit or your credit cards, please reach out um, and let us help you before it gets too bad, right? Yeah, your digit it's really important. Um, we're all bad for it. My little girl who's eight years old knows more about this stuff than I do, and she's eight. But that's what they know, they know a world without it. They don't know anything different, right? Well, because our identities have largely moved online. 100%, 100%. So. so talking to her about stuff, I'm like, you know, mommy wants to make sure that, you know, you're not talking to people that you don't know online. You have to ask mom before you go on things. She's like, mom, I know all this. I know that. We learned that in school. And I'm like, okay, great. But like, mom has to listen to what you're on and stuff. But they're, this is who they are. That's their generation, right? Um, but it can be very scary because people have taken this and used it to scam people, to defraud people, lots and lots of money, right? Yeah, and the, and but at the same time, I would say that if you're not sure who to reach out to, if, because the reality is that there's a merging of online and offline identities, right? Mm -hmm. um, but talk to talk to your grandson, granddaughter, like they can help. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. They will tell you. And I always say that at school to the kids when we're doing uh, digital digital stuff technology i say like you know tell nan and pop and help them out like let them know and they always tell me stories 
yes, my nan was on Facebook and this and that, and this is what happened to her. And, and I told her, nan, don't click on that. And I said, yeah, because you guys know it, right? So yeah, ask, ask your grandchildren, they will help you. They know exactly what they're doing. They think it's just so easy, right? <laughs> my poor dad, he doesn't use anything. He used the bank machine and that's it. Um, and she, he won't even, he hasn't even tried over the years. But my in-laws are very into technology, right? And they're using it on a regular basis. But sometimes they'll call with different questions and stuff like that, right? And they've gotten into selling stuff online. So that's another thing, making protecting yourself if you're doing that. Set, selling things online is a really hot thing right now. Um, making sure that, you know, you're not having people maybe come to your home. And if someone is coming your, to your home, somebody else is there, you're ready, you have a package ready to go out. Um, don't send money to anybody unless you have the actual product or whatever. Um, we've had people who are buying dogs that spent thousands of dollars on the dog that they never ever received, right? Or you sent money to someone and they were supposed to deliver, you know, an item that you bought and never ever showed up, right? At the RNC, both in Conception Bay South and at headquarters, we have a spot. It's an orange parking um, spot. And it, that spot is designated for people who want to do online sales between each other. So if you want to meet someone up there, there's cameras everywhere, there's police. Um, and I'm telling you, if someone's trying to scam, they're not going to go to the police station to do that. Right? So that's a great spot meet at um you know areas that are well populated so if you say hey you know what i'll meet you at tim hortons with whatever i'm selling tim hortons always got cameras there's lots of people around um and um, it's a good spot to go to like make sure you're not doing it in um parking lots and stuff the other thing like you know be very wary about someone coming to now i have done it like had someone come to my home and pick up something um but i'm not letting them in my house right we meet at the door, here's your thing. But you gotta be really, really careful um, with someone coming to your house even, all right? So that's another thing. Big, like people are selling a lot of stuff online. All right, so this is identity theft, name, birth date, and your social insurance number. You wanna protect that, like you said, um, in your person and online, all right? Um, and some of the things that you can do to protect yourself, that we already talked about, right? Destroy any documents with information on it. Protect your PIN numbers. Um, this, this one always comes up, and not about identity theft, but for a lot of seniors, I know, um, especially with the pandemic that's been happening, snowmageddon, like we were like, all of us were kind of trapped in our homes a lot. And we relied on other people maybe to do grocery shopping for us. I know like I'd go to Costco for my in-laws because I didn't want them going up there, especially in the beginning of all this. Um, and I would pay for it and then they would just send me the money. But giving somebody your bank card and your PIN number to say, here, can you go get my groceries? Um, once you give that person your PIN number, if they take money out of your account, well, they're not going to be charged with that because you willingly gave them your PIN number. So the bank is not going, they might be, could be charged with theft, but the bank is not going to cover you. That's what I mean. Does that make sense? So, you know, if someone steals your PIN number, blah, 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 that's a different thing. But if you willingly gave somebody your PIN number, the bank is not going to cover you for that. All right. Um, the tap stuff, right? If you enjoy tap, I enjoy having a tap. But if I lose my bank card and somebody finds it, they can tap really, really quickly, right? Have a very minimum amount that you're allowed to tap a day on it, okay? So you can go to your bank and they can adjust that. My dad lost his wallet the other day and he was like really worried because he had tap on it. Now he went to the bank and got the tap taken off altogether because he would lose his wallet every day, right? So he took that off because it was making him worried and stressed. And I said, Perfect. Reduce your stress by doing those little things, right? Uh, minimum amount of uh, money on your tap. And if you don't feel comfortable with that, if you're like misplacing your wallet a lot of times, your bank card, get the tap taken off altogether. Okay. 
There's um there's one other great feature that I just came across because I frequently lose my wallet. Um, is uh, if you go online or you get someone to go online for you after you lose your wallet, you can lock your cards. Yes. Yeah, that's it's a great. Fantastic. And you can unlock them. Like it's not if you lock it, it's not locked forever, but yeah. you can immediately lock your cards. Yeah, that's a great that's a great feature on some of the cards. Is it all, all the banks? I wonder. I, you I'm, have only, I'm only assuming that. Yeah, you can't imagine it wouldn't be. Yeah, because everybody yeah. tries to keep up with each other when it comes to that, right? I think it, it is most banks, that. Tanya. I think it is most banks with the lock feature. Yeah. The security and safety. That's great. Yeah, and that's a great thing. Just jump on it really, really quickly and yeah. just lock it until you find it. Right? Yeah. And if you don't find it, you go to bank and get a new one, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, have checks delivered to the bank and not your home, right? Um, I don't like not a lot of people use checks anymore I find but occasionally like I have this one lady that uh, helps me with my garden and she likes to check so I write her a check and send it off into the mail um, trying to convince her to let me email money to her but I haven't gotten there yet um, and cancel credit cards that you do not use if you have credit cards that you're not using you haven't used them in years like my god I had a Sears card right <laughs> We love going to Sears, my mom and I. And I had a Sears card and Sears closed down. What am I keeping the card for anyways, right? But cut up cards that you're not using that are no good. Throw them in the garbage, right? You don't need them. Um, and again, don't carry too many documents. We already talked about that. Memorize your pins. All right. I don't know about you, but there's so many pins. I can't keep track of them a lot of times. Um, but try, try to have different pin numbers for different things. That's easier said than done. And I'm guilty of not doing that. Um, try to have different pins, um, maybe a couple that you use um, that if that one don't work, I'll use this pin, right? If you can't remember which one it is, okay? And please don't give out your pin numbers to anybody. Um, I had a senior who, um, he used to have a home care worker come in to his house and he'd give her his bank card um, to go pick up odds and ends for him. Um, and he, so something say it was 50 bucks. He'd notice like it was a hundred bucks gone, you know, and, and it, over time, this became a lot of money, right? Um, super sweet man. And I went down talking with him and said, you know, I, you know, I, I'm going to charge her with theft. Um, the bank wasn't going to be able to cover him because he gave her the pin and he, he was like, no, I don't want you to do that. Right. Because he depended on this person and he trusted her to come and care. And he was afraid that he wouldn't get anyone to come and help care for him the way she did. So um, I intervened myself and went to um, the company that was um, she worked for and said, well, we're going to have we have to do something this because it's going to be um, you know, it's going to be $50 here, $50 here, then it's a hundred, then it's like things missing in his home and stuff like that. Right. Um, so sometimes we have to help people advocate for themselves because um, people are sometimes depend on others. And a lot of times when it comes to this stuff, it might be a family member. And that's really hard for people to say like, you know, and it's really hard to accept that your, you know, a family member would do that to you and you don't want them to get in trouble because you love that person. Um, but you know, a lot of times there's things that can be done to help protect yourself, um, without, you know, maybe going down the route of pressing charges. Maybe there's steps that we can do to help you prevent, um, being a victim yourself, right? Little things that you can set up. Maybe you have a, a separate bank account and on that card, there's only so much money in that account. And that's the money that you have. So if you need someone to go get your groceries, well, there's only a hundred dollars in that. Right. And that's all the amount of money that's in that. So little things you can do to protect yourself, um, little tips that you can do for that. Okay. Um, and I'll just keep going through this one. We already talked about that. If you do become, um, you know, someone does steal your identity, don't forget, please call the police. Notify all creditors reporting agencies. So if creditors are calling you. You want to let them know that this is what's happened and there's going to be a police investigation. So the police will give you a file number and that's what you can give the creditors um, once you report it. 
Start log of all contacts with authorities and creditors. So keep track of like when the creditors have been calling you, you've talked to the police, you've done whatever, and watch your statements, like your credit card statements. I know I'm terrible for that. My husband's awesome at that. He can't put up a picture, but he knows how much money we got in the bank for sure. And he'll watch um, every transaction. If something comes up that looks strange to him, he will notify it. Um, any of you guys traveling um, to like, Florida and places like that, maybe you travel a lot. That's somewhere where um, be really careful with your credit cards um, that they're not being, um, you know, someone's not stealing the numbers and stuff and, and putting charges on. Always follow when you're traveling, keep a close look at your um, statements when you're traveling. Like if you're out gone, like if you're gone for a week, every week, have a look every few days to make sure the transactions are transactions that you have made, okay? Because I notice in Florida, a lot of times um, it's gotten better. They didn't have, years ago, they didn't have the technology that even we had in Canada, which is kind of funny. Um, they didn't have the chip technology and you had the swipe, right? Most cards now have the, the chip technology, which is a safer uh, route. But what was happening, they take your credit card and they go back to the back and swipe because they might have only had one machine or whatever. So they're taking, that card is out of your sight now, right? So you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on your um, statements when you travel a lot, okay? And that is it for me. I don't know if anybody would like to share or have any questions. I know it's very general. A couple of things I want to mention about scans, though, of which I don't have up here on this. I was just looking at it. It says... Of January 31st of 2022, so this is really recent stats, Canadians reports of fraud, 5,569. Now, I can say that that's probably double or triple of what really has happened. A lot of times people don't report that they've been a victim of a fraud or a scam because they're embarrassed a lot of times and feel, oh, I'm so foolish, I can't believe, and they're not reporting it, all right? Don't feel embarrassed, not like anybody can be a victim of the scan. It needs to be reported so that we can share the information and we can try to um, mitigate the, you know, the depth of it really, really quickly as much as we can, all right? So don't be embarrassed about it. Um, anybody can be a victim of the scan. I can be a victim of the scan and I'm a police officer right? Again, we're caring, trusting people. Um, Canadian victims of fraud, it says, so the number of reports were like, say, 5,500. The victims of fraud were 3,634. I can say that's probably three times the amount, again, because people don't report it. And the amount of money in 2021, that was lots of scams, $34 million. $34 million people have lost due to different kinds of scams. That's a lot of money. So there's a lot of people. And that's what's been reported, right? There's a lot. So that's why this continues, right? That's why we continue getting those phone calls for that free cruise ship, right? We keep getting those calls from Revenue Canada. If somebody is calling and that sense of urgency is in their voice, you got to do this now, you're recording. It's there's not right. If there's something wrong, you're going to be scanned. That urgency. I had, this was years ago, I was doing community services. So I was probably about seven years ago now when I first started. And I went to one of the um, seniors residents here in the city. And I did this big presentation. They had a lovely auditorium um, on scans and frauds. And we had a lovely day. And I had this senior come up to me after and they wanted me to come back to their room to chat because they didn't want to talk in front of everybody else. So I went back with them and um, they started to tell me about how they had been a victim of the grandparent scan. So if you don't know what the grandparent scan is, is that she received a phone call from who she thought was her grandson. And it was over the phone and they were like, it's always starts off as, hey, Nan, or hey, grandma, or whatever like this. And they start picking up on little subtle things that the person will be saying. And, and she'd be like, is that you, John? Or are you Johnny? And they're like, yeah, Nan. And then he started this big elaborate story that he'd been arrested for impaired driving in Montreal. 
And she actually had a grandchild that was away. So she really thought it was them. Um, and he needed money in order to, you know, for bail and to get a lawyer. So she sent him money. And then a few days later, called again, Nan, I need more money. And she totally believed this, like you would, because you want to help your family member. Anyways, at the end of the day, she had lost over $70,000. She had sent to somebody she has no idea. She, it, her daughter came over to visit her and she said like, have you been talking to Johnny lately? Because he kept on saying, don't tell mom and dad, don't tell anybody else, right? Because they'll be upset and worried. And um, she's like, have you been talking to him lately? And they're like, oh yeah, he's down so-and-so skiing with his friend or whatever. And then she told, and it all came out then, but it was too late. She had already sent that much money. Police investigation happened. We had a really awesome officer who was on that because she had already reported it. She was just telling me the story. Um, and like I said to her, like, she never got that money back. It was gone, right? Um, by the time the police investigation got going, it was in Montreal. They have warehouses of people just on phones. They shut that down and moved to another spot real quick, right? Um, so she lost, and, she lost, and God bless her heart, she was so sweet. She was embarrassed about it. She, she, and she can't get, she was having a hard time getting past it obviously right and she said well my daughter said I think she was like in her 90s or something and she said well mom you only got a few years left anyway so don't worry about the money and I was I almost died I was like oh my god and she was just making a joke though but I was mortified because I couldn't believe she said it right but she was trying to make light of like losing all that money because that was her savings that she had for life like living in her that you know that she paid for her bills and stuff anyways don't be a victim is what I'm saying to you. Like all these things we're talking about today, um, it sounds like very simple things to live by. But again, we become very complacent in our lives and we are very trusting. Reach out, ask questions, right? If you're not sure, don't be embarrassed, right? We're all, like I, like I said, I could be a victim tomorrow. My husband was almost a victim, right? So reach out, ask questions. You can call us anytime. There's lots of resources in the community to reach out to in different uh, communities that you may live in. And if you don't know, Seniors NL is amazing. They will direct you. If they don't know the answer, they will direct you to the people that do know the answer. Because I had to call them before too, because I didn't know the answers. <laughs> so reach out. Don't be afraid to ask. And be safe. Um, but don't be afraid to get out and enjoy your community. Um, because we do live in a beautiful, safe place. Um, even though sometimes we see on the news all this kind of stuff happening, a lot of times, remember, the news wants to create that conversation and stuff, um, sometimes creates fear a little bit. Um, when we see serious crimes happening, a lot of times the victims are known to each other. So don't be afraid to get out, enjoy your life, uh, but be safe doing that. And that's it. I don't know if anybody has anything else. Thank you very much, Tanya. I am going to encourage people to um, ask questions. There is one in the chat. Um, there was um, there was one when people um, uh, registered. Layla Berquist um, said that she was very concerned about telephone scams. Oh yeah. And, and yeah. I know that you touched on that. Yeah. Would Would you like me to explain what happened to me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, was just a, it was just a few months ago, and I was uh, on the net talking to uh, to Bell about getting a credit for one of our cell phones. And while I was on there talking about it, I got a phone message come up saying that uh, we're ready to send you your credit. Uh, just click on this link and it'll go right into your bank account. And I did that. And the next thing you know, $2,000 came out of my savings account. Oh my goodness. And um, so of course, uh, you know, the bank uh, recognized it right away because the amount came out of savings and I never take money out of savings to pay anything or transfer money. So, um, you know, the money got returned to me, but uh, ever since then, um, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but all the major banks, credit card companies have all changed their way of, of uh, protecting your identity. 
And even Revenue Canada, you know, every time you go on now and check your account, you have to verify it through a phone, you know, and they'll send you a, a number now, yeah. so that, uh, you know, to make sure it's you. So all these extra protections are being put in, which is great. But, uh, you know, it's amazing how easy it is to get scammed. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And sometimes it's just a little click. And, and sometimes it looks so believable, like when you look at it, like the website to click on to. Yeah. And yeah. it might it might just have a little like a dot in it, like a yeah. period. Yeah, because it might have the like right into it. Yeah. Right. So you have to be very, very meticulous. And all of us, I could have clicked on it, like could have been me. Same thing, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, Tanya, it's true what um Leslie was saying as well. Um, I was a victim of uh, a software fraud, it locked up my computer, it was so believable. And uh, somehow they got hold to my bank account. My bank did reimburse me the amount they stole. Uh, mm -hmm. Really opened my eyes because I thought it was quite savvy well, or suave as they say, but yeah, it can be done. But now set up most banks. Now, if you have to call your bank, they ask for a verbal. It's only you and that bank knows for verbal um, authorization. So no one can call in to steal your identity. So they have increased their security, I must say, most banks. Yeah, and I find the banks too, they're very, um, like there's been situations where like seniors have gone to the bank to remove a lot of money. And now it sends off red flags and they ask more questions and stuff like that with people, which is really, really good. Cause we had this, uh, a man, that was a couple of years ago now who had gone to the bank and he was going to remove a lot of money. Um, and, and they just asked the questions and it actually came out that he was actually being a victim. So they stopped it really, really quickly. So if your bank is asking you a lot of questions, don't take it personally. They're doing it to protect you, right? Yeah. To make yeah. sure. And also if you do, if it's, um, some people are doing online banking, which some seniors do now. Yeah. Um, they also, uh, there's, your bank will alert you if there was a fraud on your credit card or there was unauthorized, please call the bank. So yeah. that's a good indication if some seniors are using um, credit cards via banking or, um, or purchasing or whatever, but your bank can notify you when your credit card's been compromised. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, really, really good. And making sure we close out our accounts, don't have like our credit card saved on our computers that we can just, cause my husband does a lot of online shopping and I noticed my daughter knows how to access the credit card. Like, and I'm like, geez, she's eight years old. She can go shop on a shopping spree, right? So I had to say that too. I'm like, you can't leave that on there. If, if we, someone could get our computer even, right? And I, and I don't say passwords. Yes, don't say passwords. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or credit card, because some sites that you do buy on, they'll say, they'll save your, credit card or most of your digit i don't do that anymore yeah absolutely um we have uh the statistics in terms of people reporting tanya um to the uh canadian anti-fraud center 10 percent yeah that's like, it that's so the it. reality is and i don't know why but they say call your local police and call the anti-fraud center because if only 10 percent of people are contacting the anti-fraud center, that means 90% are, we are giving them the right to do it. Absolutely. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. So and, it'd be nice if that number went up. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Uh, can I ask a question? Yep. Um, when you get these phone scams, like the one that's uh, quite popular is the uh, board of security uh, and you, you'll get arrested if you don't do something. Well, of course I don't recognize it right away. So I blocked them, but I'm just wondering how you report them. Like, do you take a copy of their phone number and report that? Because they can easily change the number, can't they? Yeah, and a lot of the numbers are being done um, through computer systems now, where it's almost like a robot, and it just um, they're getting numbers. Because before you'd be able to recognize a number, you'd be like, oh, that's a scam, delete. Now they're coming up just like regular numbers a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you take a copy, copy of the number if you can. If yeah. not, just reporting the incident itself is fine, will be fine enough. Yeah. Now, when you say that, Tanya, reporting to the RNC? 
Uh, no, the Truth and Anti Crime. Yeah. Anti -crime. Okay, so I'm going to share um, the name of the organization, the phone number, and uh, and the URL. It's in chat as well. If anybody wants to go in there and check it out and copy it. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to um, you want to report to the Canadian Anti Fraud Center. It's a toll free number, eight 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 four nine five. 8501. You can also go online at uh, through the fraud reporting system um, at https colon two forward slash forward slash forward slash all lowercase anti fraud center all one word dash Center anti fraud with an E. Dot CA forward slash report dash signalese. <laughs> Obviously, French is not my first language. S is in Sam, I G N A L E Z dash E N G dot H T M. Also, since if you're on your computer, just go into the chat, copy all the words that I have there and just save it into a Word document or somewhere on your computer. Awesome, that's awesome. Now- Leslie Oak have, has one question. If you have been scammed though and lost money, call the RNC also and they'll do an investigation. So also call them. Or the RCMP. Yeah, yes, or the RCMP depending on where you live, yep. Yeah. Um, Leslie Oak has a question. Has there been any issues with the security breach with the healthcare? Um, not that I know of. I wouldn't be able to speak of it, to be honest. So um, I have no idea. Sorry. So no one's con contacted the RNC on that topic? They may have, but I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. To be honest, I can make up a lot, but I'm not going to. <laughs> But I haven't, no, I, I have no idea. I'd have to touch base with the fraud guys and see. Okay. But not to my attention. I have no idea. Does anybody have any questions? No, but Tanya, thank you for um, your presentation. It was really, very, very informing. Yes, very much. Very much so. Uh, so. So Tanya, if you would do me a favor and just unshare your screen. Yeah. And I'm going to run because I have to go yep. to another presentation. Well, thank you so right. much. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you soon, hopefully, in real life. Okay. <laughs> and if everybody wants to just hold on for a second, we'll close this up. Hang on. Now I just need to share my screen. Thank you, Tanya. Um, so uh, just a couple of little things. Uh, a few people, uh, when they registered, said that they would like a certificate. So if, uh, as part of your uh, professional development, you need a certificate, happy to send you one. Just send an email to marye at seniorsnl.ca. Uh, if you would like to be a friend of Seniors NL, what that means essentially is that we can create some business cards with your name on it and all of our contact information. And if you know anybody in your circle or your community who maybe would benefit from a call to Seniors NL because maybe they're, they have a problem they need to solve in their lives, uh, there's something related to taxes or housing or whatever it is, have them become a friend of Seniors NL by reaching out to, again, Mary E at seniorsnl.ca or call 737-2333, ask for Mary or Meg, and uh, we'll happily make you friends of seniors and now, and uh, that way we can sort of get ourselves out there more, helping more people. Our next Zoom session is going to be next Tuesday, March 22nd, from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. or longer. Um, and it will be, let's talk about hearing loss, and the elderly, and we'll uh, send out something by the end of today or first thing tomorrow morning on that. And if you ever need to get in touch with us, uh, what we'll do is we'll send out, as soon as we have the recordings of this, uh, we'll send um, the slides, we'll get the slides from uh, 
Dr. Dr. Constable Schwartz. <laughs> She'll like that one. Um, and uh, and we'll get her slides. We'll have the recording from this, and we'll also include the anti-fraud information and phone number and URL for you in that email, and we'll send it to everybody who registered. Thank you for joining us, and have a lovely day. Thank you. Same to you.